All right, so let's take a look at the isolation levels. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we talked about two extremes in isolation levels, right? Uh, meaning there's the one, one extreme, there's no isolation, right? All threads and all processes can read and write whenever they want, right? And we can, we can already imagine that that would be chaotic, right? Everybody reading and writing and trampling and, write and, and, um, and overwriting somebody else's work while they're, uh, while they're trying to perform a task. So that's one extreme, no isolation. Right? The other extreme is uh, we all make a queue, and nobody gets to, only one person is allowed to, or one single process or one single thread is only ever allowed to touch the database. Right? And they're, only, they're the only ones who uh, get access to the database. Yes? Right? You know, between those two, in that, in that extreme, we're serializing the access, uh, and, um, and, and, and we're fixing, there, there's, no, there's no possibility of inconsistency. Right? Because only one, one process is ever allowed to touch the database. So between those two extremes, there's, there's other, other um, isolation levels that we're going to look at and see that different isolation levels target different types of uh, uh, risk of inconsistencies. Right? The, the, the three that, that we looked at, right? Uh, dirty reads, um, repeatable reads, and, and phantom reads. Okay? Uh, so let's take a look at the various isolation levels that are available. Yeah, so these are the, the these are, uh, you know, this is making the, the, uh, the argument that we do need some kind of isolation level, right, J just, to, just so that we don't have chaotic access to, the, to a database and risk of inconsistency. Uh, first, let's look at the, uh, the, the, the different types of problems that could, that could go wrong, like dirty reads. Here's one of them. You have two transactions. One is doing a, a, uh, a read, right? It's reading, uh, for instance, the age of a user, and it's 20, okay? Uh, and um, uh, meanwhile, a different transaction is, is updating that value and updating it to be 21, okay? So now we have 21. Now, this, the first transaction reads again, all right? Uh, but before the transaction two gets a chance to either decide to commit the changes or to roll back the changes. Right. That means that the, the transaction number one is reading data that has not yet been made permanent. Right. So we, we say that, that they're the reading dirty data, data that is not yet, that we know, we know that it's in, in flux. Right. We don't know if it's going to eventually actually be 21. Right. Because the second transaction could decide to just roll back and just put it back to where it was. So that instead of 21, it goes back to 20. Okay. Uh, so, so, so in this case, this is the classical example of a uh, dirty read, either a, a uh, an explicit commit, or something went wrong. You know, we lost communication with the database. We never had an explicit commit. Right? Nobody actually made an explicit commit, meaning that any of those changes are uh, never were made permanent. Were only temporary. Right? And if we allow anyone to read uncommitted data, they are going to uh, have potential. Not necessarily, but there's a potential of inconsistent dirty reads. Uh, the, other, the other one is the non-repeatable reads, uh, where uh, we, make, we make a read, right? We read the, uh, the, uh, a transaction uh, reads a user, a particular user. Uh, transaction number two uh, makes a change to that data, right? Uh, it makes a change and says, OK, well, I'm going to change the, the, the age from 20 to 21. Uh, and uh, and a, 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 a different, and it commits, meaning this change actually was made permanent. Now it is 21. And, uh, and later on, uh, the transaction one assumes that these two reads are going to be the same. Right? That I read it before, and it was 20, and I read it again, and, it, and my assumption it was that it was, all, that it was still 20. If my logic assumes that the, that the data has not changed, Right? And, I ha and I have no way to guarantee that no one's changing the data under me, right? I might uh, risk a, a non-repeatable read. Okay? And lastly, a phantom read, uh, where one transaction might be reading, um, uh, might be reading uh, multiple records that, are, that meet a criteria that are going to come back with multiple uh, rows that meet the criteria. For instance, here, you know, return all the, uh, the users that have ages 10, between 10 and 30, meaning I might have hundreds of users that meet this criteria. Okay? Meanwhile, 
Uh, meanwhile, somebody on a, in a different transa transaction, unbeknownst to the transaction number one, unbeknownst to transaction one, uh, they're inserting or updating or deleting records that would have matched, right, would have matched my query, okay, that would have been here. So this comes back with 100, with 100 users, but if I just would have just waited a little bit after this insert, I would have counted 101 users, not 100. Okay, so again, this is, this is the assumption that my second query is going to be the same records as before. Again, I'm, this is kind of like a repeatable read, right? It's like a repeatable read, but for ranges, all right? Uh, so if my logic assumes that the count hasn't changed, that I'm working with the same identical set of, of records uh, without, without trying to guarantee that indeed it will be the same set of records, if I, if I, I would need to guarantee it, right, if, 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 for my logic to work, right, then I incur in a risk of a phantom read. All right, so how do we fix this? How do we fix each one of these um, inconsistency risks? Right? Uh, well, the uh, transactions have the capability of enforcing different levels of isolation. Right? There's, first, there's no, there's no when, uh, one, of them, one, one of the extremes is what is called read uncommitted. This is where the chaos, this is where chaotic, right? where you allow everybody to do whatever they want. Right? Read uncommitted meaning I allow you to read things that might be non-permanent. I am allowing you to read things that might be in transit. Right? That, uh, nobody, that, uh, that some transaction might be in the process of changing data but has not yet committed. So I, I am allowing you to read uncommitted. So no isolation. And the other extreme is the last one, serializable, where we create a queue and all threads and processes will have to wait on each other. Only one, one thread or process at a time. We lock everything, no risk of inconsistency, no problems whatsoever. But between the two, there's two other isolation levels. One of them is read committed. Read committed means that I am going, if anybody's going to read any data, I'm first going to check whether that data has been committed. Or is there some transaction going on that is in the process of, of manipulating that data, right? Has not yet committed that data, right? If they have not yet committed that data, I'm not going to allow you to read it. You're going to have to wait, right? Because I know that, that somebody is updating that, that, that row, right? You're gonna, I'm going to put you in a queue, okay? And, not, and uh, uh, only when the transaction, the first transaction commits the data, then I'll wake you up from the queue, and then you can go and actually read that data. Make sense? All right. Uh, so that, this read committed fixes, fixes dirty reads, fixes dirty reads, right? but it does not fix the other two. It does not fix phantom reads, and it does not fix repeatable reads, right? Only fixes dirty reads, right? So because you don't allow me to read dirty data, right? You stop me. You, you make me wait until that data is permanent. The second one, repeatable read. Right, repeatable read says, I'm going to guarantee that if you do two select statements, one after another, right, uh, that data will always be the same. Meaning that if you do a select, if you read, I'm going to acquire read locks. I'm going to lock right, the record that you are reading, that you're selecting from. Okay? And if I lock that, that, that row, right, that means that anybody who comes in and tries to write to that, uh, to that record, right? Uh, or, or delete that record, or somehow manipulate that record, they're going to have to wait. They're going to have to wait uh, because I want to guarantee repeatable reads, meaning that uh, you know, if, I, if I start my transaction and I do the first read, right, uh, a little later, right, my logic can assume that the data that read, it had read earlier, it's the same data there. That, that, that was, it's still the same data in the, in the database, right? Uh, and then once I, 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 uh, I release the locks, I, I do a commit, then the read locks are removed on the, on the, on the rows, and then anybody who is waiting to write to that, to that uh, record can then continue and do so. Right? So this fixes both. Fixes uh, dirty reads, and it also fixes uh, repeatable reads. But it does not fix phantom reads. Right? Phantom reads is like a repeatable read, but it's multiple records, not just one record. Right? 
uh, because in the in the in the in the uh, repeatable in the repeatable read isolation level, I'm only locking a single row. Right? I'm not locking multiple rows. Right? Uh, to, to guarantee that I'm not going to have any of these three uh, um, um, inconsistency uh, risks, I need to lock all records that I am interacting with. So in the, in the serializable, uh, we lock all records that uh, meet a particular criteria. So if I say, you know, select all the employees that have a particular salary range, right, and it comes back to me, you know, a thousand uh, records that meet my criteria, all those thousand records are locked, right? So if anybody comes in and tries to, uh, to um, well, actually, the table gets, gets locked. So if anybody comes in and tries to insert a new record, right, uh, they, would be, they, they, would have to, they would have to wait, right, because uh, that criteria might, might screw up my select statement that assumes that there's a thousand records that meet a particular criteria. So serializable is the highest level of... Uh, uh, of isolation level. Obviously, the more the more isolation levels you you uh, you you add, the slower the entire uh, the entire application becomes, right? Because now you have threads more and more waiting on each other, right? That can't work concurrently. Um, right. So we, we took a look at uh, right. We took all, all those 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 diff different ones, serializable. So, and this is a table that uh, just uh, summarizes. The, uh, the, 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 the various levels of isolation, read, un read uncommitted, read committed, re uh, repeatable reads, and serializable, these are the, the various isolation levels, and, and what inconsistency risks do they, do they uh, address? Right? Obviously, read uncommitted doesn't address any inconsistency risks. The, um, the uh, read committed uh, addresses dirty reads, repeatable read addresses both, Dury reads and non-repeatable, and finally serializable just you know just uh, addresses all three uh, risks, uh, inconsistency risks. Make sense?